welcome to this week's episode of your Manchester with me, Miss Belinda Scandal. And me, Mr. Mark Llewellyn. How are we all? We've got a brilliant show for you this week. And it's great to have Mark back. How are you, Mark? I'm very well, thank you. And you? I'm all right. Have you had a busy, Good. busy time? Have you been I away? I've had a busy, busy time. I've been all over the place. I phoned you the other day and we had a conversation <laughs> whilst you were hanging <laughs> off a tree. <laughs> I was, that's right. Uh, perhaps tell everybody a little bit more about that. Well, I've been doing Christmas displays in the garden centre. Daisy right. Nook. Yes. So I've been decorating lots of trees. And so it's officially colours. happening then. We're definitely having Christmas we are having this year. Christmas this year. Yeah, I yeah. was going to cancel it, but I've decided. Go on, let's go ahead. Um, and do we have any um, specialities that we should be looking out for for people that are just thinking now about getting their their uh, their Christmas tree sensation going, or the Christmas theme, the planning their rooms, anything? No. No, nothing at all. Uh, yes. Yes. Uh, <laughs> a lot of very vivid colours this year. You would like it, in fact. Uh, I don't like vivid colours. <laughs> mm. Well, I knew, I knew got one. I had mm. an off day when he did that one. I uh, We've got trees with oranges and teals. And, oh, good colour. Bold uh, colours. Uh, yes, very bold colours this year. Bold colours. Mm. Well, that might be um, going along the lines of the new um, interior decorating situation trends. Really? Why? What year. are we having there? It's all about biophilic design. Designs. Good lord. And bringing the outdoor, everywhere, indoor. Yes. Oh, exactly. yeah. oh, right. Yes. Uh, living walls. Yes. Greens. Yes. Mowing your carpet. Mowing your carpet. Yes. That's I wonder if nice, you could get away with doing that. I wonder you know? if you could have a goat in your front room. Oh, I there. would. Hey, you'd have constant stock of cheese, wouldn't you? <laughs> It'd be lovely. <laughs> How wonderful. Listen, something else that's popped into my mind this week, yes. right? But it's concerned me, and I had to bring it up with you. Yeah. Because I feel we've been, we've been, that word, dissed. Oh, really? Slighted. <laughs> yes. Oh, she doesn't like oh, that. Oh, I hate that. Oh, she but doesn't. listen, you're a representative for our gorgeous king. <laughs> I don't speak right? king before you lure me down some trap. Okay. <laughs> how, how do you think we should be feeling as a, as a nation that another nation and their premierships are, are kind of ignoring slightly us? Well, everybody has their own beliefs and they have the right to express their own beliefs, don't mm. they? So, Do you not think if the king and queen go over to Australia, though, there should be their people to support them? I'm sure they will. Yes. I mean, this has come up before many, many times. Right. When, uh, various different royals have been to Australia and other countries, and yes. suddenly you find an output. It can actually work in the opposite way because oh. people say, well, because often you get like a silent majority, don't you? Mm. And really it's only people making a fuss that causes those people to actually stand up. I can't help but think if our queen was still here, our queen Liz, mm. that she wouldn't stand for it. And you can imagine Philip literally going stamping on people's heads to make sure <laughs> that none of this fully occurred. <laughs> Have we become I'm... too familiar as a royal family? Is this is what happened? We've become too familiar. We're, we're like we're on Instagram, we're on Twitter. We're, we're not aloof anymore. Well, they've got to be keep up with the times, haven't they? Even you are on all these things. I'm, I'm trying to be. Yes, yes, yes. So no, I think it's it comes and goes. It ebbs and flows. This argument um, has always happened. Okay. Well, we are still a great city. That is that is for we certain. Certainly are. And uh, the writer and creator of Peaky Blinders, they're filming this week over oh, at the, or towards the Northern Quarter. Well, it's funny you should say that because driving into the studio today, I saw Unit yes. PB on lots of signs and go. I wondered what it was, so that's what it is. So it's the writer of Peaky Blinders who's created a new drama. We've had lots of things being filmed recently. Mm. There's a, a new sick, um, a new movie called Emily that's being filmed. Okay. That was actually done on Canal Street as well. Okay. What's with some of the cast is Matt the Donkey. On this week's show, as oh, we yes. get closer, we'll be um, we're speaking to, to David Allwood about his new show, Homo Parody. Uh, what is Homo Parody, though, Mark? Homo Parody is a collective of LGBTQ plus individuals from across the country who joined together after lockdown to recreate iconic music videos for charity. Oh! And you can't touch them for it. No, you can't. No. Uh, also today, the Halloween cabaret show Killing It is coming to Canal Street's Brewers after seven sellout shows in Clapham or Calm. It'll yes. be here on the 26th of October and we're speaking to Mr. Gay Great Britain of 2022 all about the uh, what the show has in store. Marvellous. Mm. And we'll also be talking to award-winning theatre artist Le Gâteau Chocolat about the family-friendly musical extravaganza I Wish. Now, I Wish takes inspiration from the most beloved fairy tales, explaining what happens when wishes are granted. It's guaranteed to be a mesmerising family experience. Mm. This is how your show's looking. Ooh. And joining us now is Mr. David Orwood. Welcome, David. How are you? 
Hello, I'm good, thank you. Thanks for it's having me here. It's been an absolute long while since we last saw you here in Manchester. I'm trying to think what you were in when you were up here last. I think it was Miss Saigon was the last Miss one. Miss Saigon, that's right, because we learned actually on that day there exactly what they use as the top of the gates, didn't we? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes, which was interesting. <laughs> For those who don't know, we'll do another post on that. But listen, you're coming back to Manchester, you're coming to one of my favourite venues, you're coming to the Brewers, and you're bringing us a lovely evening of spectacularness. Uh, tell yeah. us all about it. Yeah, so we've been doing shows at the two Brewers in Clapham for over a year now and they all go so well and we just were like let's just you know take a leap of faith and go up to manchester and bring bring our show to a manchester audience for the very first time um so we're bringing our halloween show which is called killing it uh on the 26th of october and it's gonna be <laughs> it's our most ambitious show we've ever done we're basically making a halloween musical like we're just throwing so many things like elements of cabaret into a plot that is uh i wouldn't even say it's a loose plot it's a real plot we've got a full story um and oh my cat is coming to get involved a black Hello, cat, kitty cat. <laughs> um and yeah we've We've started rehearsals already and the show is full out. It's so fun uh, and I just can't wait to do it in Manchester. We've always wanted to perform in Manchester and this is actually Homo Parody's very first gig. So we're, we're buzzing for it. So Homo Parody then, what are the, the essences that are included within a Homo Parody evening? So it's... All, well, we, we're all about joy. We just want people to have a good time, to enjoy themselves, to laugh, uh, to be entertained. And yeah, we we kind of mix everything because we're a dance collective fundamentally, but we have so many talented singers in the collective, drag queens, uh, cabaret artists. So what people can expect is a little bit of everything. We do full out dance routines. We have an incredible host. Um, it's Monroe this time round. And she, we saw her at the Drag Idol finals. And just actually, I went straight up to her after she finished her set. And I was like, no matter what happens tonight, can I book you for um, for killing it? And she was like, oh, yeah, that sounds amazing. Like she's a proper like rock chick drag queen. And I think it will work perfectly for for this show. So we're really excited to have Monroe. Um, and there's a cast of eight, uh, eight cabaret performers and professional dancers. And what I also love about it is we're all collaborating on the show. Like I direct it, but it all comes from everyone. So if someone wants to do something, wants to try something out, then we, we try it out and we make it work for the show. Um, so yeah, it's, it's going to be, it's going to be fun. I'm really excited. <laughs> so are the, do the audience get involved in this or do they, is there a special dress code that they must adhere by? The audience definitely get involved, for sure. There's a few elements within it. I think the opening number, people will know a routine to it. We always do a musical in our shows, and we're starting with a musical this time. Is we it going to be Wicked? <laughs> it, do you know what? It actually was going to be Wicked, but we um. changed it. It's going to be the Rocky Horror Show. Um, and so a lot of people know the time warp. Everyone can be getting up and doing the time warp with us. Um, and yeah, we also, we have some games within it, but there's also a prize for best dressed. So best fancy dress costumes, come spooky, come as a mouse star. <laughs> and uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's see who wins. Uh, for those of you who don't know, you had a, bit, a title bestowed on you a few years ago. What was that title? Uh, yeah, so in 2022, I won Mr. Gay Great Britain. And then last year, I came second in Mr. Gay World. So and how, how has that kind of changed your life? How has it had an impact on you? Uh, it really has changed my life. I, it's opened a lot of doors. I've been to the House of Parliament to campaign for LGBT rights, um, uh, particularly trans rights and inclusion. Um, I... I've been blown away by the number of organizations, charities, and all the people that I've been able to reach out to and to help. And yeah, I, I mean, the reason I did it initially was to kind of get the word out there for homo parody, because we're all about power and togetherness. And it was set up 
to help people come back together after lockdown in a sort of safe and supportive environment and to give people another option uh, in their social life that was sort of a healthy way of interacting with people. So like coming to dance classes and socials and all that kind of thing. Um, so the two kind of come hand in hand and and now I'm kind of focusing on homo parody, but within all of that, we raise money for charity, um, always LGBT charities, and I campaign for for things such as You Are Loved. I'm an ambassador for them. Uh -huh. um, and I feel like that's kind of all thanks to Mr. Gay Great Britain, really. Um, it kind of gave me a little bit more of a platform to be able to do uh, the things that I wanted to do. So, yeah. It sounds fantastic. Now, this show, we must say, is coming on the 26th of October and it's coming to the Brewers, not the two Brewers. One's in London, one's in Manchester. Tickets <laughs> price from £12 to £15. What's the difference in price there? What do they get different? Anything or nothing? So um, we've got a few more early birds um, up for sale and then it goes to uh, full general admission, which is £15. And people can buy tickets on the door and cash and card as well. Sounds like it's going to be a good spooky, spooky event. Uh, thank you, though, David, for everything you've done over the last few years and keep going with doing all the good fundraising that you're doing. You and your other, we must mention your other half because you're such a cute couple. It's so lovely to see that real love does fully exist in this beautiful world of ours. It's an absolute joy. And, of course, the pictures aren't too bad on the eye either <laughs> that you're posting. So, Tar, very much for that. Uh, thank, thank you so much for now, though, David. Thank you. Thank you so much. Well, wasn't that absolutely fascinating? Wasn't it? Mark? Wasn't that good? Yeah, I'm looking yes. forward to that. Yes, it'd be a load of people having a nice boogie, a little dance. Yes, a little, a little, yes. a little time with themselves. Hey, I tell you what, that reminds me. There's going to be a. We're not that long away from um, Eurovision, really. Are we? No, next, where is it this next year? Next May. I don't know where it'll be. Who won it last year? Do you know what we need? We need somebody in that knows all about Eurovision. We do. Don't we? Yes. Um, I knew somebody. I think. I tell you what. Next week what? we'll have a, we'll have Chris Hagen. Oh, yes. Chris Hague from Mank Hagen. Yes. And he'll tell us all about it, won't he? Yes. He knows all have you about you. Have you ever been to watch Eurovision? Uh, no, I have haven't. Have you ever been in it? I was I in it, yes. What did you do? Uh, I was a puppet on a string. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, Brotherhood of Man. Oh, yes. They came to my school. Did they? Yeah, because one of the women in it, her brother was my geography teacher, Mr. Was they saving all the kisses for you? They certainly they were. They were the first version of Bright Eyes that I heard. Oh, yeah, On a tape. And that on a tape. Bright oh. Eyes. That's one for rabbit lovers, isn't it? And when you have to edit the tape with a, yeah. a, um, a blade. And a blade. A sticky tape. Thing, and also it? on a cassette where you had to use a pencil. Yeah, That was the only way to tighten yes, it up. Was it was. A pencil, <laughs> tighten it up. How absolutely fantastic. Yeah. Um, Mm. Mm. Uh, right, so uh, <laughs> let's move on to our next interview. Yes. Yes, I'm very excited about this one. The Legato Chocolat. I just can't. Oh, and you've got two productions coming up in Manchester, haven't you? One with the Halle and one at home. Do tell us about it. Indeed. Um, so I uh, made a kid show a while back. Um, I think it was 2015. I made a kid show called Ducky. And... Um, I never thought that that was something I was going to do, but it was very rewarding. And it was born of uh, uh, my, my need to give my nieces, I've like got two nieces, um, the ambition to become what they could see. Uh, and to also to talk about bullying and to talk about race in a way that, um, and queerness in a way that families could understand. Mm -hmm. um, and the the show that I'm doing at home is the follow up to Ducky. Um, so Ducky is now nine years old, and I thought I'd make a sequel. This is not linked to Ducky, but it's um, my second family show. I'm very excited to bring it to Manchester this December. Fantastic. And I was looking through the list of some of the music that you featured in the in the uh, event with the Halle. Some fantastic yeah. music in there. Um, I so the the great thing about the music selection in the Halle based either concert this weekend is that um, I try not to be limited by far. So soprano, uh, alto, tenor, baritone mezzo soprano contralto all the music is fair game they just they're songs that have lived in my heart and lived in my soul and i get to do them 
with the fullness of an extraordinary orchestra this weekend. So mm-hmm. I've got When I'm Laid um, by Purcell, which is a soprano song. But it's also born of my love of some extraordinary singers like Jesse Norman. Jesse Norman's mm-hmm. rendition of that is mm-hmm. earth shaking. So to be able to do it versus not being able to do it because I'm not a soprano, um, th- this form allows me to tackle any and every material. And I run the gamut all the way from Purcell to Whitney, um, which is exciting to have in, in the one concert. Sounds absolutely amazing. We hope both go well. And thank, thank you for you joining so us on the show. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. Have a lovely evening. Do you remember Sarah Lee? I do. Weren't they the best gatos? Oh, I can't find artists. anywhere, and I keep going on about this. Viewers, please help me. I cannot find anywhere that does a good Black Forest gato. They've gone out of fashion, haven't they? This is shit like prawn rings. Uh, well, aren't they, can't you get a prawn ring in Iceland? Oh, man. <laughs> I believe it's a store. Oh. So my staff tell me. Right. But uh, I don't know. No, I've not seen a prawn ring for a while. No. Uh, I've and volivants. Seen- Volivant. My mother does volivants for me every Christmas. Yeah. Right? I've got to have a mushroom volivant, right? <laughs> but they've it's gone out of fashion as well, haven't they, though? They've gone out of fashion. I did have prawn volivants to do recently, so they're, they're available. Right. Uh, we don't need to go into crisis mode yet. Well. Um, yeah, you're and saying I had a lovely Vianetta. <gasps> Vianetta. I know. Mm. It was common for a while, and then it came poshed into oh, yeah, no, And I've often roll. wondered, you know the tray it comes in? Yes. Why they never made that out of edible chocolate? Because that would have been delightful, wouldn't it? That would have been lovely. I know, I've also thought yeah. that. Maybe I should work for Walls. <laughs> Maybe the Walls should be sponsoring us and we should get a free supply. Other ice creams are available until that sponsorship <laughs> fully occurs, everybody. Uh, listen, you've had a great show. Yes. We're done now. Can we go home? Yeah, I'm going to get Marcus. Consuela to come and pick me up. I've got some damsons on a low light. Some what? Damsons on a low damsons. light. Damsons, they're like mm. prunes, aren't yeah. they? Yeah. Make you regular. Do they? Yeah. See, you're doing it wrong. I leave my damsons a very long time and turn it into gin. No, yeah, well, I don't drink, do I? No. Oh, well. So I, I like don't drink. drink. Don't drink. Don't. No, <laughs> don't drink at all. You like the what, the jam? I like jam more than drink. Do you like a marmalade? Yeah, so we'll have a marmalade. I like a marmalade. Mm. It's got to be a marmalade with a bit. <gasps> orange juice. This is the argument I had the other week. <gasps> yes, Just what? before we go, viewers. <laughs> orange juice, with bits or without bits? Oh, with bits. Really, why? I just think it feels like it's proper stuff. Doesn't it, though? But I tell you what I'm drinking at the moment <laughs> from a certain store. <laughs> Which one? we mentioned two weeks ago, actually. Oh, yeah. To celebrate an anniversary. Right. Clementine juice. Don't like clementines. Don't you? No. Oh. Not a big fan of clementines. You can't yeah. be a good easy peel. No, I would have thought you could squeeze your own, though. I can. Using. I thought you were doing it now, actually. Well, yeah. Uh, yes. Squeeze, squeeze, yes. squeeze. squeeze. Yes. You could... <laughs> I can juice you anything, me. Own... <laughs> Listen, I can eat an apple through a tennis racket. I can't flower. <laughs> Honestly, not a problem at all. No issue. I'm being told we've got to wrap up now. No, I think that's just. Oh, that's just sure. <laughs> Hey, we've done a, we've done lots today. We've done topical. We've done tropical. Yes, we hey, have. We've, we've done, done it all, flower. Chocolate. chocolate. Yes. We've done healthy, unhealthy. <laughs> we've covered and all the angles. We've covered that much of cake today. We've given it various different slices. Yes, I feel I want some now. Do you? Yes. And some food. Just some food, oh, to be honest. A cup of tea and a chocolate eclair does mean much. You've changed since the king put a medal round you. <laughs> I can tell you. It's all changed. Anyway, thanks for watching, everybody. Check out the podcast this week. Mm. Stephen's got loads of interesting things coming up over the next few weeks. Has he? Yes, but it's apparently... It's yeah. yeah. Well, that's it for this week's show. Join us next time for another fantastic episode of Your, Your Majesty. Majesty. Uh... Mm-hmm.